the name? Why, why do we have the names that we do? Why do we keep those names? What do they mean to us? Um, Dr. Esau and I were in Cameroon. We just came back two weeks ago. And when we were there, we were told that the name Cameroon actually comes from a Portuguese word for shrimp. And so basically, the people who call themselves Cameroonians are calling themselves shrimp. The, I challenged them. I said, you know, there's a problem here. You cannot go around calling yourselves shrimp because the white people felt so little of you that this is the name that they gave you and you've been independent supposedly for 50 years. There's a problem. So the question of the name, you know, and what it does to us when we bear those names that somehow do not reflect who we are or, or who we should be or who we should want to be. Not Bantu shrimp, but really African people. So I want to start, and I hope it's not a very large group, which is good. I want to start with the, um, so a couple of pictures. That, and I would like you to react to them and tell me what you think. So this is a picture of a Chinese man. He tells you, hi, I'm Chinese, and my name is David Smith. <laughs> what do you think? You're shaking your head. Why, why are you shaking your head? That doesn't sound like Chinese to me. <laughs> so there's a problem, right? There's a disconnect. Here's a Chinese man, right, telling you that his name is David Smith. Right? So we agree there's a problem. Because he's Chinese, he should have what? A Chinese name. A Chinese name. You sure about that? <laughs> it's a principle, right? You know I'm setting you up, right? You know that, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, please. All right, now, this is an Arab guy. He's telling you, um, hi, I'm Saudi Arabian, and my name is Philip Davidson. There's a problem. The first name's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. If it's Arab, I know. No, that. I know, I know, I know. Well, you see, why is it okay? Why, why is it okay? And why isn't it okay? Who thinks it's okay for this Arab man from Arabia, right, to have this European name, really, right? Go ahead. Now, this is an Indian woman. And she said that, she, hi, I'm Indian, and my name is Sharon, Sharon Pierce, right? What's the problem with that? Is there a problem with that? Yeah. There may not be a problem, because if we look at the principle of self-determination, we have to look at the history. You just can't judge a book on, on its cover. So you have to peel it back and understand a little bit more about the history, and if there's any self-determination in that, you, you think she would be Indian and have a European name, and that could be an act of self-determination? We don't know. It's but we know, but we know. That's the point. That's the point. We have to stop lying to ourselves. There is no self-determination in an Indian woman having a European name. If she has that name, it's because the British invaded, colonized her country. That's what it is. And brutalized her ancestors and violated their conscience to the point where, you know, they, they would have those names. That's the truth. Yeah. Let, you know, my, Dr. Saz said, you know, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I, I take no prisoners. I have no time to waste with, you know, war talking around the bushes and all that stuff. Let's just, let's just be honest about this. I know it's painful because, you know what? It's going to force us to ask ourselves, who are we? And it's a painful question to answer. What about that one? She's German, and her name is Olufemi Obatala. <laughs> Olufemi is a Yoruba name, and so is Obatala. It's one of the divinities, right? So she's German, white German with blue eyes, totally melanin-deprived, and she's telling you that her name, she has a Yoruba name, Olufemi Obatala. What's the problem? There's a problem, right? What is it? So she's, she's German, she should have a German name, right? But she's doing it from a different perspective. Because they're a minority over there, and they got to connect with that to justify their rule. 
So versus the other one, when she. I, I hear you. Right. Yes, you're right. You're right. But I made that up. Right. Okay, I made that up. So wow, well, you know, her name is not always female. But I'm making a point. I'm making. You know, I just want. I just want you to to really see the That's disconnect right. That's right. and be shocked by it. This white girl, blonde, blue eyes, has an African name. You know, this, something is not right here. Right. Something is not right. Next one. No, you went too fast. This is a white boy. He's French, and his name is Zan Li. Mm -hmm. Now he has a Chinese name. <laughs> now how can you be French and have a Chinese name? Yes. What, what if his mother is Chinese, or what if he does it? Do you, does it look like he has a Chinese mother? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I'm asking you. No, no, let's be real. Let's keep it real. Does it look like no, no, of mixed French. ancestry? He looks No, I'm asking you, does it look, you, you have no problem, you have no problem saying there's something wrong with a Chinese man having a, a, a white name, but now you're saying it's okay for a French man, yeah, it's okay for a French man to have uh, a, Chinese a Chinese name. If it comes from a certain place, do they have to have that name? If, for instance, in Philadelphia, everybody from West Philadelphia is black, everybody from, you know, Northeast Tioga is Spanish, and everybody in the suburbs is white. I mean, we, we should have more diversity. And which is 2015. It, it shouldn't just be, oh, okay, you're black, stay over there. You're white, stay over there. It should be a diverse world at this point. Especially looking at social technology, everything is so interconnected. Even looking at the African saying Ubuntu, everything is interconnected. We, we should just be human. It shouldn't just be. Really? That's what you think? You know, I, you know what, that's, I, I, I don't want to be too harsh, but that's the type of discourse that defeated people hold. I've never heard white people say, let's just be human. No, they hold on to their names, they hold on to their culture, to their history, to their ancestors, their traditions, they impose them on other people. You said black people, Hispanics, and white people in Philadelphia. I bet you anything, most of them have European names. What's the, where's the diversity here? I'm just saying where is it? That we should be living in it. I know where we are, but where we could be is somewhere a lot better than where we are. Yeah, that's what she's going to help us with. Yes, we that, that's exactly my point. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm, I'm still maintaining <laughs> that there's a problem, in my opinion, with a French man having a Chinese name. This suggests some type of disconnect as well. Something, is, something happened to him in his history that created a disconnect right. between who he is. He, right. He's telling you he's French. That's right. He's not telling you he's half Chinese, half anything. He's telling you I'm French. But my name is Chinese. I mean, it, it's just we came up with French, Spanish, white, all because we chose to put ourselves into a box. No, I disagree with you. I'm African, and that's not a box. I mean, you know, claiming your identity. We move on to the next one, please. Now this is this is a, a nice African lady, African American. She said, "I am from Philadelphia, and my name is Liz Smith." You've already seen ladies like that. Is there anything that shocks you about that? Yeah, I'm shocked. Nothing shocks you. I'm shocked. You. You're I'm shocked because you she looks shocked. like an African, and she should have an African name. That's the way it looks like to me. Now she says she's from Africa. I can say it, but. But you see, I did it on purpose. She says she's from Philadelphia. Everybody else is attaching themselves, you know, to a continent, a, a place. But here, her, her memory is very short. Right? Mm -hmm. you, you want to say something? Oh, I agree. She's attaching herself to a city when everyone else at least attached herself to ethnicity. A country, a culture. So, yeah, That's I, right. I do believe that there's a short-term memory there. There's a Absolutely. So why is it that it doesn't shock us, right, except for a few of us, that this young black woman, African, obviously of African ancestry, should have a European name? Because a lot of black people have to get their real name, all of you, because of how we were oppressed. Okay, so why do we still have those names? Are we still oppressed? Yes. Who is oppressing us? Yes. Okay, all right, let's move into the next one, please. And here is a brother. Hi, I'm from New York. My name is Bob Raven. <laughs> Does that shock you? 
No, right? Yeah. It does shock me. I find that on bail. Sure. <laughs> that's why that's why we're having this conversation. <laughs> I find it just as unbearable as I found right. strange and bizarre the Chinese man who had a, a European, European name. I find that shocking, right? If you're Chinese, you should have the name of your ancestors. If you are an African person, you should have the names of your ancestors. Yeah. This is this is you know, this is common natural behavior. Unless, unless mm -hmm. something has happened to you, which you have not had the courage to correct. If you have kept making excuses for yourself to justify why you keep oppressing yourself, right? To me. So we will continue this discussion. Yes. I just wanted to tell a quick story about this importance of, of naming and, and, and context from a cultural standpoint. Because I, I grew up in West Baltimore, and, as a, and I was probably around 11 or 12. And in our uh, neighborhood, there was a, a young couple, I'll never forget her name was Nalongo Asitutu, and her husband, Kojo. And they, uh, Nolongo actually got all the kids together, just the little girls, and renamed them, mm -hmm. gave them African names, and formed a, an African dance group. And we started to call our friends these African names instead of Michelle, it was yes. you know, a, an African name, whatever. And so we grew up with that influence, and it really helped us as young kids to create a, kind of a, a African consciousness. Yes. And so my question to you is, what comes first? Do you have the name or the cultural context that helps them with the definition of that name to move us forward as, as a community? What comes first, the name or the cultural context? I would imagine you would have to have some cultural context first. And see, that's what they kind of gave us. They gave yes. us, you know, sort of the dancing, the tradition. Me and that connected mm -hmm. husband were in, in the ghetto of West Baltimore. Yes, well, I think even if, even if you don't have the cultural context, you, you should definitely get the name though, mm -hmm. because the name first will take you off the, 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 the white orbit, mm -hmm. you know, and place you in an African orbit, and hopefully that will help you then mm -hmm. find the cultural mm -hmm. context that you may be missing. Mm -hmm. But you really need to start somewhere. And the know? part two of that, because I did have a son, and mm -hmm. my son, I wanted to honor uh, my ancestors, whose name is Paul. And so, how do we manage honoring the ancestor who was somewhat victimized by the naming the European name, and including that with the next generation going forward? Well, we, we have to come to terms with the fact that those names cannot be our ancestors' true names. Sure. You know, because these were not names that were passed on to them in any natural, historical, cultural sense. They were imposed on, on us. When I, you know, changed my name back home, he was saying to me, well, but you're rejecting your father's name. And I said, I'm not rejecting my father's name. He never gave me that name. It just passed on to me what the white man imposed on his ancestors, right? So I didn't feel I was betraying anybody. In fact, I felt I was honoring and respecting my ancestors by going back to an African name. You see? That I was not content to mm -hmm. think of them as, you know, slaves. Mm -hmm. But I went beyond that mm -hmm. and found who they truly were in their African humanity. Mm -hmm. You see? And I honored that. Mm -hmm. So, any African name would work better for us than any European name. I'm sure about that. Yes. Yes. <coughs> uh, my name is Sumi Alamuma, and it's my legal name for some 27 years Good. now. Yeah, I once had a slave name as well. Mm -hmm. um, my question is this. While we talk about slave names coming from the Europeans, what about the Arab names that was imposed upon us. We dance around that. Ooh, Absolutely, you you're right. It's the same. That? It is the same issue. The same mm -hmm. issue. Those names, 
again result from a violent mm -hmm. imposition and denial in denial of African identity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same process that we're talking about. I'm glad you bring it up uh, because I find just as problematic as a, a black sure. man would call himself Bob, it's just as problematic as a black man who calls himself Muhammad, you know? Um, because, you know, again, we're mm -hmm. talking about Arab nationalism, that, you right. know, if you're going to be a Muslim, you have to take on an Arab name, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go to Mecca, that's going to be your, your, your holy place, and you're going to, or you have to learn to read the Quran, their sacred text in Arabic. So, you know, again, we talk about some serious cultural imposition. And some of us think that we're doing really something great by taking on Arab names, but we're really not. The bottom line is, let's go back home, and our home is Africa. Right. And there are plenty of beautiful, powerful African names right. that will give us strength and power mm -hmm. and structure us in a way that will allow us to walk mm -hmm. with our head up and not, you know, as some copies of people who despise us. I want to remind you that in Arabic, mm -hmm. the words that means black, abd also means slave. That's right. So if we think that we're doing ourselves a great favor, by bearing an Arab name, we need to rethink that. Yes, you want to say something? Yes. Uh, my legal name now is Abdullah Umar Muhammad. And uh, I received that name uh, about 1974. Uh, when I lived in Miami in 1990, uh, studied with the Yoruba community there. And I uh, went to initiation and I received the name of Odu Tayo Oyeye Mi Ade. And, uh, but getting back to the Islamic name, uh, the history that I've studied of Africa, the Europeans changed the maps. And Arabia at one time was part of Africa. And the original Muslims were black. It was the Turks, the white Caucasians that came out of Asia Minor that dominated Islam after a period of time. And that's where we ran into this problem. Those are the people that went into Africa and enslaved and oppressed the people. But the, the black Muslims, before they dominated Islam, there was no problem. There was cohesiveness. Yeah. From you know, my, from my state. Yes, I, I, I really have to take issue with this. Um, you know, Islam was started by an Arab man by the name of Muhammad. Um, was it six something? Six thirty-two. Uh, six twenty-one. Six twenty-one. Uh, twenty-one. And he did it really because, it's my understanding, he was trying to really bring his people together. So he was interested in in um, strengthening his people, his Arab people, and so Islam like any religion really is based on the deification the making sacred of arab people you know um that's my understanding of how islam came about the fact is that if you look at islam you can see that it's clearly not an african cultural product it's not it is at odds if you study the african tradition like we have, in particular, when we did the Encyclopedia of African Religion, it's very, very, very different. You see? So, it's difficult for me to accept that and claim Islam as an African religion because the text says it's not. Doctor, um, um, the only challenge I have with that is this, is that when I accepted Islam, it wasn't from an Arab perspective. This was back during the heyday of the Nation of Islam, back in 1968. Okay, now let me finish. Yeah, well. And to me, Islam, when I accepted it, was a tool of liberation. Mm -hmm. I understand okay. that. Yes. Because that it was misguided. I didn't, didn't That's right. Why can I be then a Muslim with my African name? Why, why, why isn't it possible? Why do I have to make, why do I have to turn towards Mecca every time I pray? Why do I have to pray to a God? Allah, who doesn't exist in my own culture. I mean, what, what is that all about? You know, why do, I have to, why do I have to believe in a religion that says that God only speaks Arabic? Right. Well, but, what is that? But, what is that? But, 
I understand what you're saying, but then that gets you right. That gets into Arab culturalism but, and then their dominance. But okay. but Islam Islam is an Arab religion. It was created for to to make uh, you know the Arab people sacred and divine. But That's what it was about. Uh, can I make one last point? Yes, please, and we will move on. Yes. Now, the understanding that I have of the teachings of the Nation of Islam is that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. He came with a new message. He didn't come with that message that the Arabs presented. Okay. And that message did not get a chance to evolve the way it should have because of a lot of reasons. Let's go back to 19, to the 1960s and 70s when the FBI uh, instituted the uh, COINTEL program. Okay. And they went and they attacked every black organization. Okay. Cultural, religion, whatever you, even Christianity. So, we didn't get a chance to evolve the way we really wanted to or, or could have because of that. But he was not definitely making us Arabs. Now, if you notice, after when he passed, that's when the FBI came into the organization and took it over and redirected it. And that's where we are at today. My and, brother. and many people, they don't even realize that the teachings that they're following now are actually controlled by the U.S. State Department, the FBI. Yes, I hear you, but what name did you take? Muhammad. What no, name did he take? The name that I took. No, no, that he took. Muhammad. He okay, that. isn't that Arab? That's, that's I mean, you know, but him. okay, but my, my point, and that was the point of my whole, of my whole uh, presentation, is that let's just face the truth. I know it's painful for us, and don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the nation of Islam, because I understand where they were coming from, I understand what they were trying to do. But if we realize we made a mistake, we should correct it. Let's just look at it, open our eyes, and say, that was a mistake. Why not? What's holding you back? What's making you argue with me about why, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the name? Islam is African? Why? Because no, no, it's, it's a rhetorical question. I want to... Goal, my yes. term goal is not only to use that name, but to go back to Africa. But let's and, do and, it! But, if, it, but if, if Africa, where I want to go, if it wasn't so politically unstable, I would be there now. You know what? You have to go back to the Africa within you. Mm. That's what Africa That's is. That's right. Go to the Africa within you. Mm. Use that name. Mm. Change that mm. Arab name. Take on an mm. African name and you will find a place for you in Africa. Mm. But you have to find Africa within yourself. You have mm. to accept it. You have to embrace it. You have to love it. Mm. You have to live it. Mm. You have to dream it. That's right. You have to want it. That's beautiful. Not make excuses. And I'm not making an excuse. I know, my brother. I respect you. I really do. But I'm just speaking from my heart. You know, it's like we are in the situation which we are because, you know, we, we just let's let's move on. We understand. You know. So I wait for you. All right. <laughs>